Welcome to Drummer Daily. Here's my dad, Daniel Hathaway. Hello there, friend. Man, I feel like it's been a while. I guess I, I guess I have missed a couple of episodes, or not missed a couple of episodes, missed a couple of days of posting episodes. It's been, uh, it's been, uh, man, since I actually recorded an episode, it's been almost a week. Uh, so I definitely apologize for that. Uh, and I'm realizing as I'm talking that my voice is kind of deep. I guess uh, allergy stuff is getting to me here in Tennessee. Um, but yeah, I've had a great last few days. Um, let's see what happened. Uh, we, uh, I did a couple of drum intensives and those were incredible. Um, I'll tell you what, I've been so encouraged by, um, the people that I've, that I'm, that I've been meeting. I, 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 in, in very different ways, each person, they, um, each, each person that I've met and done these intensives and we've had a, you know, a, a good amount of time to kind of explore drumming and professional drumming and all that that entails. Um, I, I've been so encouraged to discover that, um, that so many people are at least kind of pursuing this, um, I, I need to come up with a word for it. I don't have a word for it yet, but they're, they're pursuing this other way of drumming that I am kind of promoting and talking about. And um, so it's um, everyone's, you know, different levels or different abilities and different, you know, mindsets around it. But it seems like most people that I've worked with are, 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 are getting it, you know, at some level and, um, and are pursuing that, that path of drumming, which is um, very encouraging to me. So um, I'm hoping that if you're listening to this, that, uh, that you're doing the same thing. Uh, that you're that, that specifically right now because we're we're in the middle of these uh, these manifesto um, uh, episodes, uh, which we're we're getting to the positive side of things now. So um, I'm excited about that. Um, but uh, but uh, I'm hoping that if you're listening to this, that you're also um, you're also into that. You're also pursuing that that path of drumming and. Um, I actually do. I actually have like a in a conversation or a couple of conversations I've had this week uh, with drummers. I've I've kind of really narrowed down and thought and figured out a way to kind of communicate what I'm trying to get at as far as how we think about drumming. That's a kind of a, a I feel like it's a monumental shift from how most people um, think about playing drums, and it and it's amazing what you can unlock in your own playing once you shift your mind to start pursuing or thinking about other aspects of drumming. So anyway, we'll get to that uh, very soon. I've got lots of episodes planned, and so we'll get there eventually. But today, um, we're going to talk about, uh, I I believe this is number five in the series. Um, I could be wrong. I think it's number five of seven. Um, And uh, today's manifesto statement is, the most impressive thing I can do as a drummer is play a part in an amazing song. The end result is more important than my own achievement. So I can't tell you, um, maybe I can, because I'm going to attempt to. (laughs) So I can tell you that uh, we've talked, I've talked about this before. I think we've talked about this recently on the podcast, but um, I was a music fan first and I've always been a music fan first. Um, And I actually think, in terms of uh, 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 the end song when I'm, when I'm approaching my playing. I don't think about my part. Um, and um, I've discovered something recently about a lot of drummers. Um, and this is kind of off this topic, but I feel like this is, a, this is much more specific to something you can adjust in your own playing today to maybe start to see a change. And that is a lot of drummers, uh, of course, it's very hard for us as drummers to have real perspective on on what uh, on what we're playing as far as how it sounds, so what the end kind of perception of what what was coming out sonically, it's because playing drums is so physical. It's such a physical instrument. There's a there's a um, when you play guitar, um, electric guitar especially, or even like keys, um, where your sound is amplified um, through a, some kind of electronics or electric you know, signal a very small movement can create a very large sound. And so um, we are able to 
perceive what the sound coming out is a lot more, which I, I actually feel like that's a big reason why uh, we're going to talk about this in the next episode. But um, a big reason why, I, you know, I, I, every every electric guitar player that I know is so obsessed with guitar tone. And I honestly believe that a lot of that comes from the fact that they, they are able to be so perceptive of the tone that's coming out of their amplifier immediately. They hear the fullness of the sound that's coming out right when they're playing it. So they want to fix it and change it and they can, they have a good perspective on what they sound like. Um, as drummers, it's hard because our sound is not amplified most of the time and uh, a, a good portion of the sound that comes out of a drum is exactly synchronized up with a very uh, violent movement with our hands or our feet. So I'm hitting something with a stick and the impact of that, of that stick hitting that drum head vibrates up through my hand and through my body and my body feels an impact. Um, and I believe that as far as senses go, I feel like a lot of us go into sensory overload where we can't feel, well, when we feel that impact, uh, it kind of, as far as our senses go, it covers over some of the sound of that Im initial impact. So it's like we almost can't, we can't hear and feel at the same time at a really accurate level. So as drummers, when we're playing, a lot of us actually listen, quote unquote, with our bodies. We listen with how we, uh, the, we listen with the impact of our sticks or our, or our kick drum or whatever hitting uh, the, you know, the, the sticks hitting the heads or the kick drum pedal, the beater hitting the, the kick drum. Um, and so it really pulls us out of perspective of, or it doesn't allow us to have perspective on our own playing, meaning it's really hard to hear small inaccuracies, um, very small inaccuracies in our, our hi-hat or our ghost notes or, uh, you know, even the big notes sometimes because we're hitting so hard uh, relative to other people playing other instruments that we don't really get a good perspective on exactly where it lines up um, in relation to a click track or to the, the rest of the band members or whatever. So what does that mean to jump back out and talk about playing a part in a song? Well, it's really hard to know what part you're playing in a song if you are listening with your body and, and, and really your, your senses are overwhelmed with just your own, uh, your own playing. So what does that mean for me? Well, what I try to do is I really try to, uh, I'm, I'm consciously aware of the fact that I can't necessarily hear myself in the most accurate way compared to someone who's listening maybe to a recording or they're sitting in a control room or they're sitting out in an audience with a PA amplifying my drums. I'm not hearing all of that as accurately and I can't, no matter what you do, you can't, oh, you can't, uh, play, you can't play sounds loud enough to, to make, keep me, well, I don't think you safely can, play sounds loud enough through a speaker to prevent me from feeling the impact of my sticks on drum heads. I'm always gonna feel it and I feel like that's always gonna take precedence as far as actual senses go. So what I do is I have to learn what my drums sound like either beforehand or after. Uh, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a sound level. So that might mean something as simple as setting up a video camera or just turning on the voice memos app on my phone and recording myself playing for a couple of minutes uh, and then listening back and hearing not only the sounds, but also the placement. What are my, what are my tendencies? What am I doing? Am I dragging? Does this not feel as good as I thought it did when I was playing it? On and on and on. Um, but what I can do is I can start to develop at least a basic idea of what, what I sound like from an audience perspective. And then what I'm doing, honestly, is I kind of in my own head when I'm playing, I'm almost right along with the hits that I'm doing, I'm almost uh, in my own mind triggering samples. Uh, I'm triggering in my own head the sound of my drums coming out. Now, of course, obviously, like Daniel, you can hear yourself play, why are you doing this? Well, what I'm doing is I'm trying to train myself as much as possible to listen with my ears, which that phrase itself is very odd, but I'm trying to listen and imagine uh, what my drums sound like in the context of a song. What the what 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 is the end listener hearing? What is the end result? What 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 is the person at the end of the line hearing? Um, and what are the other musicians hearing from me? It's not the same as what I feel like I'm playing. It's something different, and and I have to keep the other thing, the end result, in mind when I'm playing. What does that allow me to do? That allows me to create parts that. And in many cases are simpler than what I think they need to be or 
are complex in odd ways. They're not complex, I guess. They are, they are unconventional in odd ways. They fill in a weird piece of the rhythm without actually filling in the obvious places. So if I'm playing, you know, eighth notes in the hi-hat, I'm going you know, I'm playing, you know, just normal eighth notes. Well, if there are three other instruments in that, that frequency range playing those eighth notes already, you know, I might think there might be a little 16th somewhere in there that, that I might I might be able to jump in and actually add some some sonic interest in a way that actually is complementary. So I might go something you know like that to kind of change up uh, where the hi hat is placed. And the way I inform that is by, like I said, listening with my ears, not with my body. That might feel weird to me, but if I'm thinking about what the end result of the song is. Um, it actually can allow me to create something I think that serves the song pretty well. Um, all of that to say, I, 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 the other part of this statement, of course, is the most impressive thing I can do as a drummer is play a part in an amazing song. Um, uh, you know, I've already harped for days on on not showing off and not you know being a chops drummer and stuff. So I kind of I, I kind of didn't mention that today, um, but I do want to mention you know that that. For me, the most gratifying thing is actually the song at the end of the day, the recording, the, 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 the experience other people have uh, at the song as a whole. It's not, man, the drums were awesome. It's, man, that song was awesome. It's the, it's the guitars and the bass and the keys and the, you know, if there's strings or there's vocals or whatever else is happening, like all of that stuff combined, the end result. I love a great song so much more than I love great drumming. So I'm always pursuing a great song. And sometimes a great song is one where I actually don't play any notes. I just get to sit on stage and be presented as part of the song, but I actually am not doing anything physically. And uh, those are that's really gratifying to do as well um, for me. So um, think about that. If you're, if, if you're not a music fan first, listen to more music. And enjoy all the other parts of the music that are not drums. And find a way to think, man, this this song as a whole is really, really amazing. Um, And then start to back into, well, man, if I was was a part of that band, you know, uh, what would I do as a drummer to make this song still be awesome? Even if it's something different than what you heard, um, you know, originally in the original song. Start thinking about those kinds of things. Um, And then... If you ever get a chance to record or you're in a band or you're, you're whatever, you know, think about that end result. Listen with your ears or listen with what you listen from the perspective of what the end listener, the, the person who's going to actually consume the music, for lack of a better phrase. Think about those people and what they're going to hear and then play to that. Don't play to what you feel uh, physically. Play to what the end listener is going to hear. So I hope that helps you out today, and I can't wait to talk to you again tomorrow. Thanks for joining me today, though. Bye.